So you're coming off a huge win over Mark De La Rosa. How did it feel to get that win in such impressive fashion? Uh, man, it was good. I was kind of in a rough spot, but uh, you know, I have uh, I have good coaches in my corner, and um, you know, I had a I had a good opponent, and I, it was at 135, so I didn't have to cut a lot of weight, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, every everything worked out uh, uh, real positive. Yep. Did you see yourself finishing the fight by submission? Yeah, I uh, the the same plan I had with Demetrius Johnson was you know try to get him on the ground and, and hit my front headlock series, and it starts with a guillotine and usually ends with a. Uh, either a Darce or Anaconda. So uh, that's what I worked and uh, it, it, it played out, you know, pretty much perfect. Yep. Now talking about Demetrius Johnson, you fought him back in 2016. It was a very entertaining fight. With a couple more wins, you could be back in title contention. What would you do differently if you were to fight him again? Um, I would plan my weight cut a little better. Um, I still wasn't recovered from the Ultimate Fighter house. My body was weird. Uh, I made weight four times in four weeks and I fought four times in four weeks. And uh, I... My body started eating its muscle, and like I was all gelatinous and weird after the show. So I was walking at like 167 pounds, which I'd never been that big before. And uh, you know, it took a long time to get off, and and my body is just now getting back to normal. So um, I was I was as bad as I've ever felt in a fight going against Demetrius Johnson. So um, I would I would really plan my weight cut better, and uh, you know, I'm not walking around that heavy now. So I, I feel like. Uh, everything else would stay the same. I got to go in there and make it a dog fight. I feel like that's the way to beat him. And uh, I just didn't have the gas to, to fight him like I did the first two rounds. Um, and I think that was due to my, uh, you know, my weight cut. Not making excuses. He, he obviously outsmarted me, but um, I feel like that's a fight I can win for sure. Mm. Now, let's talk a little bit about Henry Cejudo. I've, <laughs> I've seen a lot of back and forth between the two of you. Would that be a fight that you're interested in? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, I didn't have the heart to tell him when he called me out that I, uh, I just had a knee injury, but uh, I, I tore my a ACL and my uh, MCL and, and some capsule thing. I'm not sure what the other tear is, but I knew I was hurt. I just hadn't heard anything from the radiologist yet, so I didn't want to let him, anybody know because I didn't know, you know how long I was going to be out. So uh, you know, my instinct was was to just uh, talk a little trash to the guy. I didn't want to let every I didn't want to let everyone know that I was injured because I didn't know the, uh, you know, how significant it was. And uh, I just, I was hoping for the best, I guess. So, uh, yeah, I would love to fight Henry. I think, uh, I think that's a good matchup for me. Um, I think that's a bad matchup for him. Honestly, I don't know how good it is for me, but, uh, you know, I, I'm the, I'm the guy that beats guys like that. So uh, it's good for me in the sense that I jump up in the rankings, but at the same time, like after fighting at 35 and not having to kill myself to make weight, it would have to be a fight that I was, you know, either financially getting getting paid for or something I really, really liked, like an exciting fight or another fight with Demetrius. Uh, I would much rather win two or three fights at 35 and then and just fight Demetrius at 25 again after getting a few wins. Uh, I know I can't pick and choose who I fight. So the thing is, is if they call me to fight someone, I usually just say yes. So uh, I really don't have a whole lot of options. But I was never really offered a fight with Henry Cejudo. I'd never heard anything about a fight with him until... Uh, until he called me out on the internet. So, uh, yeah, I would, I would love to fight Henry. Now, I do have to ask you, with the whole McGregor and uh, Mayweather ordeal about these fires going to, to different sports, if the if the payment was right, would you ever consider taking a boxing match? Uh, for sure, I would love to. Um, the scary thing about boxing is if you're getting beat up on your feet, you just have to keep getting beat up. Uh, in MMA, if I'm losing on my feet, I can always, you know, shoot a double leg. So, uh, I think it would be fun. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think I'm I'm at that stage. You know, I'm 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 not good enough to, to jump promotions. I'm still trying to master this sport. So, uh, and that's never going to happen. So, um, but as far as uh, Mayweather coming over to MMA and fighting, I don't see why not. Uh, people act like it's crazy and asinine, but he's as qualified as anyone in the world to come over and and try MMA. Um, professional wrestlers are coming over that have no fight experience, and then you have the best boxer in the world wants to cross sports. I don't see what the big deal would be, and he can probably compete as an old man. Uh, he's that good. So um, he's definitely qualified. And uh, anything that makes the guys in the UFC more money and brings more light to the sport, any fighting sport, really, I I'm all for it. Yeah, now, talking about the sport, a lot of people who aren't fans, uh, at least yet, although it's a, a really growing sport, what do you think the biggest misconception is about being a mixed martial artist? Uh, I mean, there's a lot. But I think a lot of those barriers are being broken now with, with the female fighters and, and some fighters coming out being, you know, homosexual. It's uh, they're breaking those barriers down all the time, and, and it's just because people are getting more light. But uh, I think a lot of it was certain fans like to watch certain things, and, and they don't like change. So 
it's just an inconvenience to have another, you know, person you're rooting for, another sports team that you like. So I, I think that's a lot of it. I'm that way in a sense when it comes to other sports. Like, I don't get interested because I don't have a whole lot of time to, to be invested in, in something that I'm not used to or, or that I don't know anything about. So I think that's probably all it really is. But, uh, you know, it's getting bigger, and uh, hopefully it keeps blowing up. Mm. Who are some of your favorite fighters currently to watch? Uh, currently, you know, I, I, Anyone that I know, I, I get more invested in. But, uh, right. you know, I like guys like uh, Michael Venom Page, um, uh, Crazy Horse Bennett, Charles Felony Bennett now. Like, he was one of the reasons why I got into fighting. He was just so crazy. And, and uh, old school guys that, that did new stuff like uh, Genki Sudo. That's, that, those are the guys that I really looked up to, guys that were, were showmen and that really look like they're having fun out there. And that it's not a job and they don't take it too serious. And, and they're okay with, with winning and, and losing doesn't devastate them. Like guys that aren't scared to go out there and put everything on the line and still lose. Uh, anybody who does that, like I'm a big fan of. Yeah. Now let's talk about your training. What does a typical training day look like for you? And also where do you train? Uh, man, right now I'm not training at all. I, I just blew my knee out. So I'm, I'm taking it easy. Uh, I'm in the process of buying a house here in Las Vegas. And, uh, you know, my training consists of I go to the UFC Performance Institute mostly, and then uh, I have my live rounds and my uh, team at Extreme Couture. And then I, uh, I just started working with um, with the 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu here in Las Vegas. And um, uh, Coach Casey is the guy that runs it, and he just kind of, whenever Fallis died, this guy kind of just popped into my life, and we had a couple conversations, and I, I really like the way that he talks to people. And um, he's been a guy that I've been kind of trying to follow around and, and pick his brain a little bit. So... Uh, pretty much the PI and uh, Extreme Couture and, and 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu in Las Vegas. Regarding your injury, although it's obviously serious, do you have a timeline or the, the doctors tell you pretty much when you're able to uh, start training again? So uh, it's pretty vague on how long it's going to take, but, uh, you know, as soon as I'm, I'm capable, I'm, I'm ready to, to go again. I'm, I'm still going to start, uh, still going to be training. It's just I'm going to have to, you know, alter my training a little bit and, you know, up my mental training and, and visual visualization, uh, stuff that I can control. Um, so, uh, I got a long way to go, obviously. Um, I've never had a significant injury in the UFC, 14 fights in the UFC. I've never been out for anything. Um, and I'm guessing I had some, some tears or some problems already and it just kind of was, came to an end there. So I'm not getting too down and I, I'm keeping my hopes up, but, uh, I'll be ready to go whenever they say I'm, I'm able to.